Hello everyone, Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity here with another coronavirus update for you. It's Sunday, January 26, 2020, about four o'clock in the afternoon. A lot of data came in overnight, so let's get right to it. I'm gonna start with uh, by the numbers. So the data that I had this morning when I got up and it was here through this morning was that China had confirmed cases of 2,070 infections, uh, 37 of those overseas. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I think that's a real low ball. Uh, there were 56 deaths recorded. I'm sure that's higher by now. Cured was uh, 49 as of these. Human to human transmission confirmed. Of course, we went through that yesterday. And the health experts are saying that they think this really has the potential to migrate. Yeah, uh, obviously. So we've seen that with the shutting down of Beijing for traffic in and out. Level one emergency. In fact, safe to say almost all of China is now in lockdown, at least from a, a number standpoint. It's really astonishing how quickly this is spread. So I said I was going to get back to those numbers in a minute. Now, now here's the thing. If there are only 2,000 cases, and I'm using the word only not to minimize it, but in the sense that with 2,000 cases and a 10% case complication rate, you're looking at about 200 people who are going to be critically ill looking for serious bedding in uh, maybe an ICU bed in a hospital. So I went over and I looked at uh, Wuhan as a city district. And by the way, not all 2,000 cases are in Wuhan, but let's pretend they were. Let's pretend Wuhan had to come up with 200 beds. This is a city of 11 million people. The hospitals I located, there are about 49,000 beds, give or take, available in Wuhan. Does it feel right to you that 200 people in needing uh, you know, ICU beds, would that be enough to swamp the hospitals? Like everything we've seen before the flood of data started to dry up and no longer be coming out of, out of Wuhan, I'm distrustful of that as well. But what were we seeing a couple days ago? hallways swamped with patients. We saw uh, the dead and, uh, and very sick lying in the hallways. We saw hundreds of people in the lobbies, all with their face masks, desperately trying to get in for treatment. That doesn't feel like 2,000 cases and a couple of hundred uh, serious complications to me. Uh, what takes my BS meter and puts it into orange, at least, uh, so it feels better? I'm thinking 10 times that number, you know? So are, are we talking about 20,000? cases rather than 2,000? Or are we talking about a case serious fatality and incident rate that's a lot higher than we've been told? One of those two things has to be true, or I don't believe these numbers because uh, 2,000, this just doesn't, doesn't fit right. Okay, moving on. Let's get to some good news in this whole thing. First, uh, right, Chinese medical experts are saying right now that there is no evidence of mutations. So that's good, why? Because when a virus mutates, it's already deadly enough there's a chance it could mutate into something more harmful. Either it spreads more easily or it's got a higher incidence of, of case fatality or serious complications. That's what happened with the Spanish flu. There was a first wave that went around the world. It was bad, but not as bad as the second wave, which had a mutation in it that made it a lot more lethal. So good sign, uh, no mutations there. Um, however, we do have this idea, Dan, show this that uh, the coronavirus now spreads before symptoms show. This is confirmed now. We talked about it a couple days ago as, as probably true. Uh, in fact, it was true then. But now we have the confirmate, the official confirmation of it. So it spreads even before it's symptomatic. And, and this is a big deal. And now they don't even know. They started to say, is it five days asymptomatic? Could it be 10? There's a lot of uncertainty. This data is going to change. But for sure, this thing is spreadable without symptoms. Now, that sets it apart from a lot of people said, Chris, how is this compared to SARS? That was the big scare that came back um, earlier in the 2000s. Remember, SARS, one of the things that's different about it is, first, it didn't spread easily between people with the exception of super spreaders. So there were a few people that really spread the SARS around. So that's one difference. Um, but the second thing was SARS really wasn't transmissible until symptoms started to show. That makes it so much more easy to contain, right? And so let's uh, look at this right now. Um, moving on, CNN has an opinion piece up which says uh, the World Health Organization should sound the alarm on the Wuhan coronavirus. That came out uh, this morning. Should, no, no, they should have past tense on that particular verbiage. Uh, this is a very late opinion. Of course, the World Health Organization, the cat's already out of the bag on this whole thing. They've really been derelict, and, and you know my complaint, critique, is that they were pretending they were the World Trade Organization, not the health organization, because they were like, well, we're concerned about the impact on global trade if we declare a public health emergency. Not their job. Uh, they're supposed to be about public health, so yeah, big ding on that. 
we're seeing now in the absence of a coordinated global response, individual places are starting to take charge of this. So Japan, uh, ruling party came out and said full scale border control uh, measures are needed to prevent spread of the Wuhan coronavirus. So the legislature in Japan is saying, let's close our borders. We're seeing the same thing coming out of Hong Kong now where the doctors in Hong Kong have said that they uh, will go on strike on February 3rd if the border isn't closed. And Hong Kong is a really densely packed place if coronavirus gets there, and let's hope it hasn't already, and if it really spreads through the population. And they have to go through a, 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 a Wuhan-style closure of the city. This could be really devastating for Hong Kong. And as a nexus of world trade and finance, who knows, you know, very, very large impacts if that happens. But already, uh, this is something you need to be aware of, Hong Kong has declared an emergency and has a two-week school closure. So for everybody uh, who's, who's listening to this, if you're in a place where the coronavirus comes or has already come, you have the chance of having your kids be sent home because the schools are all closed, which makes sense. It's a good pol you know, public measure. You know how kids spread germs with each other, right? I'm a parent. Everybody who's been a parent knows those kids, their saliva is already half virus particles by weight in the first place. So it makes a lot of sense to close the schools down. But think of the impact on your life uh, around that if that happens, particularly for people who are already living on the edge uh, paycheck to paycheck, this could be a, a really big um, impact on their life. So now, uh, Dan, I want you to bring this up. Uh, look at this chart. This is showing so far of the very few reported cases of deaths, what the age spread is. And uh, all the legends and everything are in Chinese, but you can make sense of it, right? These are broken down into 10 year age bands. And it looks like 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, those bands get really walloped by this thing. That's where most of the deaths that have occurred so far. And um, that's a big concern to a country like China, which has an enormous proportion of people over the age of 60. Japan, ditto. Same for the United States, Europe as well. So there are a lot of countries uh, for whom this, this uh, illness could hit really hard. But I wanna compare that chart now to this particular statement that just came out. This was from the Chinese minister at the head of the National Health Council. This is uh, Ma Zhaohui said on Sunday that the ability of new coronavirus to spread seems to be increasing this is, again, we don't have solid data around this, but it was already transmissive, seems to be increasing. So that's a statement that says either it's already mutated or something else is happening, or now the official data is starting to catch up with reality. Um, and that's creating the appearance of an increase. So let's hope it's that, uh, that, it, that and it's not actually increasing. But this was the part that really concerned me. He also went on to say um, that it also seems that, quote, the danger that the virus poses to people of different age categories is shifting. So everything I just showed you in that chart, which shows you that the 60 and up crowd is really most vulnerable to this particular virus, this statement, I'm gonna have to follow this up in the next few days, because this one concerns me. If it's shifting, the only way it can shift is down, because it's already at the top end of the scale. So um, that needs to be decoded, and we need to figure that one out. Now, here's the thing. Uh, in the Wall Street Journal, this was on Friday, so uh, this issue of the Wall Street Journal, below the fold, we have a nice little article here that reads, response to virus stirs Chinese anger. And in here, uh, they make a couple of points. First, absolutely, the Chinese authorities in Wuhan, they messed up big time. They held a 40,000 person buffet last Sunday when they knew all about, like this, this disease is already like swamping their hospitals. 40,000 people in a buffet eating together, hopefully not coughing on the buffet table. You know how this goes, right? So the people were really mad, like, why did, why did you continue to hold that? That was a stupid decision, no question, full stop about that. And the Wall Street Journal goes on to a pine a little bit here, and they say, it is also, the Chinese government is also facing questions about the pace at which the outbreak was confronted. Well, I gotta show you something here now. Dan, pull this up. Uh, this is from Flight Tracker. What we're looking at here is uh, the flight schedule of airlines leaving Wuhan. Not Beijing, but Wuhan itself. These are just the flights out on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you can see here there's flights leaving on Sunday going all over Asia. One they're going to a Moscow airport. Uh, there are still flights leaving and in the United States, in Australia, in Europe, what are they doing? Well, people get off of these planes and these flights straight from ground zero, and they take a little temperature reading. And if you don't have the fever, you come in, but remember where we started. Everybody knows now that this virus transfers and transmits in an asymptomatic state. 
That means no fever, no chills, no febrile state, no aches and pains, nothing to even indicate to you, the carrier, that you're infected. So if you want to point fingers, Wall Street Journal, at, at the Chinese government and say they were ineffective, no less ineffective than all the governments that are allowing people to deplane from hotspots while only taking a temperature reading off of them. That is irresponsible in this story. Meanwhile, let's take a quick peek. Dan, pull this up. Look at this. Um, this is a set of measures that have happened around a nearby town to Wuhan, Hubei. This town is not just, not just closed off. We showed a, a, a picture from that yesterday. Of, of, it looks like a ghost town. But look what they're doing. They're closing all these roads off with dump trucks of rocks, sand and dirt, piles of logs. I mean, this is really makeshift. They're doing the, anything they can to just stop people from going in or out of this particular city. Again, I need you to think carefully about what that would mean if that came to a place near you. How long do you think this city is going to last? I'm sure it's fine for a couple of days. Maybe they've got three days of food in the, in the uh, supermarkets, maybe two weeks in the households. But this state of emergency quarantine can't persist for more than two weeks without serious problems. People come out of their houses, they're starving, they're, they're desperately dehydrated, something. This is a very temporary measure, but the stopgap nature of this is really gut checking to see dump truck piles of dirt um, that are meant to block people from leaving an infected area. So that's all I've got for you right now. I've got more updates coming. Well, I'm sure we'll have one tomorrow. This is breaking really fast. Uh, I'm Chris Martinson, Peak Prosperity. Stop on by, check out what we got at the website. There's articles going up hourly there right now and a really rich conversation about this, tracking it and also talking about what you can do to prepare for this because it's time. Thank you.